If you don't already have a YouTube account, you can create one today using your district email address. So you're going to go into sign in, but instead of signing in, you're going to click create account for yourself. Fill in the information. Be sure you use your school district email account. Enter a password and click next. Then head over to your email and get the verification code. Paste the verification code, hit verify. It is a good idea to create a phone number. This way, if someone tries to access your account, you're going to get a text message letting you know. Choose your birth date, your gender, and hit next. And in just a moment, you're going to get a text message with a verification code. Go ahead and type that in and hit verify. Go ahead and click yes, I'm in. And then you'll read all these terms and click agree. That was easy, you're in. So now to upload a video, click the little plus camera button and you can go live or you can click upload video. And it's going to go through a little process hoping you get your channel set up. So let's go ahead and click get started. It asks if you want to use your name or if you wanted to use a custom name. I'm going to stick with my name, but that's up to you. Now it allows you to upload a picture. So I'm going to go with my Bitmoji and scroll down. I can put a channel description. I could add links to my web pages, all of this kind of stuff. I'm just going to hit save and continue. I can come back and do that later. Now that I'm in, I can click this upload button or I could go back to this camera and choose upload video. That's how I typically do it, so I stick with that. And I can either drag a video in or I can click select file and then go find the file from my computer someplace. So if I wanted to put in creating parent observer accounts, it's uploading right now. I could write a description. It's processing at this point, you can see down at the bottom. It's going to give me three options for thumbnails that I might want to use. As I scroll down, if I had playlists, I could select which playlist. That's a good way of organizing your videos. And then you have the question of, is this made for kids or not? If you say yes, that the video is made for kids, it's going to have different types and limited number of ads you say no, it's not made for kids, then it's going to have the regular ads that are available on YouTube. There are more options if you want to look at that. You can go ahead and click next, even though it's not finished. Here's a few more options. We're sticking with simple today, so I'm going to click next. And this one's important. You get to choose when you save or publish whether this video is public, which means anyone can see it, anyone can search for it. So if I just came to YouTube and I searched parent observer accounts, I might find this. You can mark it unlisted, which is one of the things we do most often. It means that anyone with the link can watch the video, but it's not searchable. So we, we really do like that one. The third option is private. And if you choose private, then you have to designate certain people when they are signed into YouTube to be able to watch it. So you'll probably want to avoid the private videos just because it gets harder to um, manage who gets to see it and who doesn't. If you want to schedule it, you can. You can see that it finished while I was doing this. Here's the link of the actual video. I'm going to go back though to details and look at my choices of thumbnails. I think I actually want to choose this. The thumbnail is just the image that you're going to see when you're kind of scrolling through your videos. So I go back and click next, next. I'm going to leave it just like that and click save. From here, I can copy this link or I could select the embed code if I wanted to embed it into a Canvas course or into a blog. I could send it to Facebook, Twitter, any of those things. And there's the first video.